The trial of Arizona rancher George Allen Kelly accused of fatally shooting a migrant on his property near the Mexico border charge of second degree murder ended in a mistrial this week. Seven of the eight jurors deliberating seemed ready to acquit him with just one holdout leading to a hung jury. Kelly claimed the migrant was part of a group trespassing on his 170 acre ranch when he says he just fired warning shots. People who he thought were carrying rifles he said he just fired them up in the air and said he only learned that one of them had died hours later, and that was Gabriel Budamaya. And a majority of the jury was convinced, at least enough by his story, to have reasonable doubt. Now, he did not testify. No bullet was ever recovered from the scene, which the defense used in its favor. He's minding his own business in his own house, when suddenly he sees something. He sees people carrying rifles, carrying backpacks out the kitchen window. When he's walking outside, he has heard a shot. This is not a mystery shot, as the state describes. This is a real shot. Mr. Kelly hears it, and the whole situation completely changes in that moment. This is a frightening, scary situation. And in frightening, scary situations, people flee, people freeze, or people act. And Mr. Kelly acted. The prosecution painted a very different picture. And without verbal warning, without a shout, without any indication to both Gabriel and Daniel, points that weapon at these two men and shoots over and over and over again nine times. Gabriel was judged that day and sentenced to death by the defendant. The defendant never admits that he shot his AK-47. We've got Border Patrol and agents on scene for an active shooter situation and you fail to tell them that you shot your own weapon? Never told law enforcement he was in fear of his life. Alright, so now the question is, are prosecutors going to try to prosecute him again. They're going to retry him. A decision on that could be made as early as Monday. Back with me is Geraldo Rivera, Jesse Weber, anchor for the Law and Crime Network, and Misty Maris, trial attorney. Misty, do you think they're going to file charges again? You know, I don't think they're going to. And I, and I think that because the lack of the bullet, that, that really, to me, was why we saw this result, a hung jury, with so many going towards acquittal. If the prosecution didn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that that bullet came from Kelly's gun that killed the victim, you don't have to even go the next step in the inquiry. Yeah, done. I, I think that the issue is more sort of visceral than that. And I'm going to play you a, a piece of um, uh, an interview Ali Bradley did with a local in the community responding to the hung jury uh, number four. Let's listen. I thought it was a disgusting situation. And the border's wide open and everyone thinks it's okay. Crime is running rampant and it's, it's infecting everybody's lives. It's mm -hmm. disgusting. I heard there was a mistrial and God bless him. I hope he, he gets a little reprieve and I hope it, it doesn't ever go back. You know, I think, Geraldo, that may be the, 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 the most obvious reason why they're just not going to be able to get a conviction. You know, as a former uh, student at the University of Arizona in Nogales, 60 miles south, is where we went every weekend. I know it pretty well, that territory. And now with the southern border and such chaos, uh, it's pretty clear to me that uh, what was on trial there was the, the white guy, good guy, old guy, rancher against the, uh, the Mexican uh, undocumented uh, illegal uh, part of the horde and so forth. Uh, it's a very, very difficult uh, climate, very difficult situation. Uh, you know, it, it is testimony to the anarchy that uh, grips the border uh, uh, all along from uh, El Paso all the way to... Uh, uh, to uh, New Mexico, it's a, it's it's really it's a very very tough situation. I do not believe you're going to get that guy under these facts yeah. uh, because of the political situation. It's not, it's less about law here, and it is you use the word visceral. That's exactly what it is. It's the passions of the moment. It is the feeling of uh, of insecurity along the border. It's it's racial. Uh, it's the old good guy against the. Uh, uh, you know, the interloper, uh, it's a very, very tough case, although uh, it seemed the prosecutor did a pretty good job. But 
I and, didn't take I think, much. They uh, find a little opening and drive a truck through. Well, that's that's it. I think what Geraldo just said there is the point, right? There's enough arguments, Jesse, for reasonable doubt that if you are inclined to want to side with him, there's enough ways you can find uh, to do it. I, th I think it's more than that. Look, prosecutors will have to decide if they want to do it for the for someone died. They're speaking to his family, but the problem is it's actually worse for the prosecution this time around. The evidence against the evidence of circa of reasonable doubt still there, but getting a jury now it was hard enough getting a jury the first time around in that climate. Now after he almost was acquitted after this mistrial, you don't think the jury the potential jury pool knows about this case and has been feeling this? I think it's going to be much more hard, to, much more difficult to get a a fair and impartial jury this time around if they want to go. Everyone stick around. I don't think they're going to retry him. I just don't. I think they can say now, well, look, we tried, but we're not going to get a conviction. We shall see. Still ahead.